In this episode of Flea Market Rescue, we'll take wood slices and an old sign that I got from the thrift store and turn it into a beautiful tree display of art. We'll learn how to make a holiday stocking from just an old sweater. We'll take another sign that I got from the thrift store and turn it into this awesome Christmas tree sign. And lastly, we'll take some pages out of old books along with some wooden triangles that I cut out and make these very simple paper looking trees. So you ready for this week's episode of Flea Market Rescue? Great, let's go ahead and dive into these projects. Just a quick note before we get started though, if you're new to my channel, I just want to welcome you. My name's Kelly Sherry. My mom and I do a lot of vintage markets. I show you how to take thrifted items and turn it into beautiful home decor. I post a new video every week, so if you subscribe to my channel and ring the bell, you'll get notified every time I post a new video. A while back, I came across this sign at the thrift store, and although it's all right, it just doesn't have anything that makes you say, oh my gosh, I have to have this sign. So um, I did buy it anyway, just because I love the slats, and it has a lot of rustic charm to it, and I knew I could make another sign if I had wanted to out of it, so I bought it. Well, today's the day we are going to remake this. Unfortunately, I picked the most windiest day to do this. A little too windy. I think it would be better if I just roll this on, I think. So that's what I ended up doing. I ended up just painting it with a paintbrush and calling it a day. So this is all dry and we're taking a little bit of sandpaper and kind of roughing it up because it, as you remember, I love the slats about it and I also love the rustic charm. So we just want to bring a little of that through. I went to Hobby Lobby and I bought a few of these. The smaller ones I actually got at a garage sale over the summer. So what we're gonna do is we are gonna make a tree on this. I think this is gonna look really awesome. We're just gonna start building them by putting like little round pieces like that, like so. Then I have a stick that I got from outside. We're going to cut it, and that's going to be our little um, stem of their tree. Maybe we'll do like this. I like the straighter edge, so I'm going to cut that. But let's start by gluing some of this down. I think that looks pretty good so far. So I cut the stem and we're gonna glue that. I wanna do that right directly in the middle as best we can. Okay, now that it's cute, but I want to do a little bit more to it. So let's put some moss in between all the little round um, pieces of wood. 
Okay, so I have some moss here, and we are just gonna glue that in between our round pieces here. So put a little glue here, just add a little moss. This was such an easy project and I think it came out great. It almost reminds me of like a Scandinavian type Christmas with the simplicity of it and it just looks so natural. Okay, I have this cable net sweater that we used last year on some sweater pumpkins. Well, this year we are gonna use it for stockings. So I'm gonna flip this over like so. We definitely want to use this cuff here. This bottom part is like the cuff. So I'm going to put, I have a pattern that I made. We're going to place that onto the sweater and we're going to cut it out. So I'm going to get my scissors and we're going to cut that out. Okay, so we have one cut out here. We actually have two, I should say. So we wanna make a lining as well. So we are gonna cut out out of some Ostenburg. You can get this at Joann's. It's not very expensive. It might be like three something a yard. We're gonna cut the same thing out of that as well. This will serve as our lining. Now we have our lining. Okay, we are gonna start to sew our stocking. You wanna make sure that you have the side that's gonna be on the outside, which is called the right side. Right side's touching. These are the right sides that are gonna show on the outside. So we're gonna put those together, and then we're gonna sew all the way around our stocking. This is a little thicker fabric, so you have to kind of make sure you get it underneath that foot. You're going to back stitch this to make sure that it's locked in place, and then let's go.
So we have sewn all the way completely around it. Around these corners, you just kind of want to trim off the excess because that's where you're going to be turning it. And what I like to do is I like to clip up to the, not completely up to the stitching, but just a little bit on those curved edges. It just really helps. Not all the way, just a little bit. Like right here where the stocking goes up. Right here, we'll want to make a little notch like that. It just really helps with um, when you turn it, it helps with the shape. Although sweaters are very forgiving. So now we are going to turn this right side out. This is the side that we'll be showing. It looks very cool. Okay, so now what we need to do is we're going to sew our lining. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to go all the way around. With Ossenberg, there is no right or wrong side. They're both the same. So you can really sew either side. And we're going to do the same thing that we did with that. We're going to go around, but the only difference is we're going to leave a little opening at the bottom of the foot for turning. So I think I've said this before. I lost the other foot, so I'm using this foot. This probably is not the right foot, but that is totally okay. And then we're going to lock it in place like we're going to leave the opening. So you lock it in place. We're going to take the needle out and move it up. Move it up like maybe four inches. Four or five inches. And then we're going to proceed to keep on stitching. Now we have that. You're going to want to clip. Not completely up to the stitching, but close. This will just help with um, the curves. It'll allow them to turn better. Maybe one right here. Okay, so now what we're going to do, we're going to take our lining that we just sewed, we turned our stocking out so it's at the right side, and we're going to stuff this into the lining. Now remember, we haven't turned the lining, we only turned the stocking. We're going to stuff that into the lining. And now what we're going to do is we're going to sew the lining and the stocking together. We're going to go all the way around. Okay, you want to get that fabric down underneath there. 
and let's sew around. Now this fabric's a little more bulkier. Because this is more of a bulky kind of fabric, you might need to keep adjusting it as you go around to fit your lining. I know a lot of people use pins. I personally don't because I'm always afraid they're going to break my needle. But if you feel comfortable using pins, then go ahead and do that. That might be easier for you. Okay, so as you can see, we have that sewed all the way around. And now what we're going to do is through the bottom of this foot here, we're going to pull our stocking out. And then we are going to sew up that hole in the foot of the lining. So I just tuck the raw edges in and I'm just going to go over it with a sewing machine just to close it. Okay, close that. No, I still got a little bit more. Now it should be fixed. Okay. So now we closed that raw edge, that opening. And now we're gonna take the lining and shove it back into the stocking. So we'll do that right now. Clip those little strings first before we tuck the lining in. Okay, now let's tuck the lining back into our stocking. See how we have a nice finish edge here? We have that nice finish edge because we sewed that those two pieces together. So I think our stocking looks really cool. And now let's go ahead and put some greenery in there and kind of decorate it up a little. First, we need to make a loop though so that this can actually hang. I'm gonna take some of this vintage um, striped fabric and we're gonna make a loop for it. I'm just gonna do that like that, do that like that. going to cut a strip and if we just fold it over like this like that it'll look cool all right I'm not going to turn this I'm just going to sew all the way down the edge All we really need. 
So I think this would be a good size loop. I'm gonna sew across this. Lock it in place. We'll cut the extra off and any strings. Yeah, that looks good. So let's attach that to this. Okay, now that we have our loop made, we are just going to attach it to the seam right here. Right here. See the seam? We're going to hand stitch that on there. So that it can hang. That looks really cool. And now let's stuff our stocking. So as you can see, I used some greenery, I put some icicles in there, and I added one of my little hang tags. I think this makes a really great decoration. It wasn't too hard to make, and you actually can make a few of them if you wanted to. I will have the pattern available if this is something that you want to make on your own. Here's another sign that I picked up at the thrift store for $4.99. I like it because it has the slats and it even has some hardware to it. So I have this down on some plastic and we're going to spray this black. I'm using Flat Black Protective Enamel by Rust-Oleum. After our sign was completely dry, I went into Silhouette Studio and designed this really cool Christmas tree vinyl decal. I then proceeded to cut it out on my Silhouette Cameo. After it was cut out, I then carefully peeled back any extra vinyl. Then I went on to weed out any extra little pieces of vinyl, like out of the E's and the Q. I then put some transfer tape over our design. I went over the transfer tape with a credit card just to ensure that our design and our letters were all stuck onto the transfer tape. Now was the moment of truth. So we had to pull back the transfer tape to make sure that the design was coming up with it. There was a couple spots I had to go over it with the credit card again, but all in all, it came up pretty good. So you just want to line your design up and make sure that it's centered. And once you have that down and it looks good, you're going to go over it with a credit card so that the lettering will adhere to the board and come off the transfer tape. Then you're going to carefully peel back that transfer tape. And voila, we have just made a Christmas tree sign perfect for the holidays.
I drew a couple triangles out. You can just take a piece of paper, fold it in half, and cut it to make some triangles. It's not hard at all. And we're going to draw them on our board. You want to make sure that your board is like at least an inch thick, three quarters, because we are going to take a dowel rod and we're going to insert it through the bottom and you want to make sure that it, you know, there's enough room here. Then using a scroll saw, I cut them all out. Afterwards, I took the hand sander and just sanded them all down, got all the jagged pieces off so that they would look really nice. Okay, we have our wood all cut and sanded. We're ready to take a dowel rod and we're going to drill a hole right in the middle here and insert the dowel rod. I also have, I also have some of these rounds and we're gonna drill a hole and the other part of the dowel rod is gonna go inside of that. That will be our base for our trees. So we'll drill a hole in there like that and then the tree will attach to the dowel rod and this will be the stand. We are gonna drill a hole in the middle of our tree. I'm using a 3 8 bit I cut some dowel rods that were five inches. Let's make sure that they fit. They fit perfectly. That is made awesome. Now we need to drill a hole into our, our wood. We're not gonna go all the way through. We're just gonna do this right in the center here. Just go slow, because you don't wanna go through it. I think that's pretty good. We don't want to go any further or we're going to be going through. And then we're just going to put our dowel rod in there and we're going to glue all this. So I think that looks perfect. Let's go ahead and move on to the other ones. Okay, before we glue everything in, I want to paint this and kind of finish it a little. We're going to use this DIY paint in Krylon, I believe it's called. Hopefully I'm saying that correct. It's sort of like an antique white. So we're just going to paint that up. I'm also going to do the sticks too. Now that our trees are dry, we are going to Mod Podge a page of these onto each one. Um, I have this out of this old book. I'm just going to take this page out. I also have an old dictionary. We'll take a page out of that. And then I have an old music book. This one, I don't wanna take a picture or uh, take a page out because it is so old, but I will um, make a copy of it and we'll put it on our tree. 
So I'm just gonna take a razor blade and cut this page out. That should come out, hopefully. Nope, I gotta cut a little more. Let's do that again. There we go. So the page came right out and we're gonna use that on one of our trees here. We'll lay it over. Wrap it around so that we get an imprint and then we'll cut it out. And I like this page too. Unfortunately though, if we do this on this triangle here, this is the wording that I love is gonna get cut off. So uh, what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut it in half and put this portion on top and then put this portion on the bottom. Okay, so we have our pages that we cut out. And then I also made a copy of the music notes because again, I didn't wanna rip that out. That book is super old. Okay. So we have a large tree, we have a medium tree, and we have a smaller tree. I think for the smaller tree, this one here will work out best. Again, we are gonna cut this so that we can have some of that wording down at the bottom here. Then for the medium one, I'm gonna do the dictionary print. I use this one because it had wings on it and winter, I love it. So we're gonna cut that out and Mod Podge that on. And then for the larger one, I have the music notes. I think that's gonna work out really well for that. So let's start off with the music notes. I'm gonna kind of center that. You know, I'm gonna actually cut off the little tree because that might look really cute on the bottom we like maybe put it down here we can mod podge that down here that would look really cute and let's figure out how our music notes can go maybe we'll do something like that and then this can be on the bottom yeah I like that so Let's cut this out. You're just gonna wanna go along where you made the indentation. And then we're gonna Mod Podge this on here, like I was telling you. And we'll Mod Podge the little tree on the bottom. So I have the Mod Podge right here. I'm gonna dip my brush in it. And I'm gonna put it all over the back here. Just want to put a generous coat on there of Mod Podge. This acts as glue and it seals it. Okay, I think that's good. Let's lay our music notes on top of that. And then we're gonna take that little piece and I'm gonna put some Mod Podge on that as well. Now, if you don't wanna get any bubbles at all, cause you will get bubbles with this Mod Podge, you could always spray some clear coat on it 
and that will totally prevent that. I'm kind of pressed for time, so I'm not going to do that. Okay, so I'm going to just put that on the bottom here. I think that's super cute. And then I'm going to cut the ends. So here we go. We'll let that dry. Hopefully some of these bubbles that are starting to form will, will go away. And then we'll put Mod Podge on top. You know what? We're actually just, let's just Mod Podge this up right now. Ooh, oh, goodness. <laughs> I didn't mean for that to happen. A little too much. So you're just going to take your Mod Podge and you're going to put it all over the piece. And this is a sealer. We'll let that dry and come back to that. We're going to move on to our other pieces. Okay, so I'm going to cut this in half like I told you. I think that's just going to be best for this. We're going to do this on the little one. So I kind of want that to be right on top. I'm going to make our imprint. Then from there, I'm going to line these up and we'll make our imprint on that. I want that a little over here. Okay, let's go ahead and cut those. So I'm going to put a little Mod Podge on the back like we did previously. Oh my goodness. See, I don't have a smaller brush and that's why I keep pouring this out. My poor counter. I know you guys have mentioned, I can't believe you work on your counter. I do. I've been doing it for years. The most comfortable place to work. All right, so. Oh, and a shout out to my countertop twin. There's actually someone who has the same countertop and her and I go back and joke all the time about the countertop. Anyway, all right, let's go ahead and put this on here. And we'll put the top part on there. We'll line that up. You know, actually I should put the top part on first so we get that nice little part here. So we're just going to put some Mod Podge over on top of this. going to cut so I think that looks really good we'll let that dry okay now for our last one here we're going to do the dictionary paper again I like that it had wing in there like you know an angel wing it also has winning up on top i like that too remember when charlie sheen went wild went off the rails winning okay so we're just going to make our indentation Let's hope I don't spill a whole bunch on here. So I'm going to put that on. 
and we'll smooth that out. I think I need to cut the bottom here, so we'll do that. And then we'll put a layer of Mod Podge on top. that dry and we'll come back to that okay now that these are all dry we are gonna glue our dowel rods into the tree and into our bases so I'm just using a little gorilla epoxy glue it's a two-part epoxy you just squirt both parts out and then just mix it with a toothpick that's all I do so I got a yellow part and a white part, and you're just gonna mix that with a toothpick. Now, we're gonna dip our dowel rod in there, and we're gonna put it through the bottom of our tree. Just kinda screw that in. Perfect. We're gonna dip the end of our dowel rod into this epoxy and choose a base to put this in. So I think I'll put it in this one here. This hole's a little big, but that's okay. It'll dry fine. So we got one, then we'll do another one. I'm gonna just put the dowel rod in here. another base put that in there now you know what we need a little more glue we need some glue on this side here too so I'm gonna put that in here swirl that around a little and then we'll put our tree on top just want to push down make sure it's in there and we'll let that dry We'll dip our dowel rod both sides in. We'll put that into our base. And then we'll put our tree on top of that. We'll let these dry and we'll come back to them, see how they look. All right, our trees are completely dry. The glue is dry and they stand on their own really well, but there is just something else I wanna do to these to add just a little more to them. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna use some glitter glass. I got that at Sweet and Sassy Treasure. It's German glitter glass and pure silver, and it's really gorgeous. We used it in another project, if you remember. So we're gonna take our Mod Podge again. I'm gonna put a little Mod Podge and sprinkle some of this glitter glass on it. It's gonna be beautiful. I'm just gonna put a little bit of that. On there. I'm gonna sprinkle a little of this glitter glass on our tree. I'm doing it over a paper plate because I don't wanna lose any of this glitter glass. It's very expensive. Okay, that's enough to give it a nice little sparkle and shimmer and shine. They're so pretty. I'm going to add a little more to this one. This one just doesn't have enough. But really, can you have enough sparkle? I think not.
Well, that's it for this episode of Flea Market Rescue. If you like this episode and you want to see more episodes, make sure to subscribe to my channel and ring the bell. I'm Kelly Sherry, and this has been Flea Market Rescue.